and everyone that can that uh, encountered problem to get access to the to, to the lesson will be possible in the future to review the lesson. I think it's all the lessons are pretty important. So agenda for today is like as uh, is like this. So we start from lesson three, and uh, because I'm pretty sure that we discuss realization, I have only provide for you just a few questions to make sure that uh, that you understand what this realization is and uh, things that are related to serialization because yet in not only the serialization it's uh, vital for us but also some features of the of the streams we discuss streams in many aspects but there's additional one that i think uh, i need to mention next uh, let's start discussion about functional programming in the meantime, uh, I will provide you a question for today. First, let me recall what this realization is. I'm putting this question into the, into the chat and waiting for your answer. What this realization is, we are not going, I'm not going to discuss realization for, for today, but just to, just to recall what it is. Uh, today we are talking about functional programming and uh, we have two topics on the list. Anonymous function and lambda expression. It is the first, uh, first entry, first item. But uh, as you can see, it is two independent topics, anonymous function and lambda expression. It is two independent, uh, independent topics, but actually they, of all of the topics, all these topics, all two topics has the same background. Um, next, we will talk about the extension, extension method. In the meantime, we'll discuss some very important things related to the, to the unit test. I promised to provide you more information how to deal with the problem that uh, we need in the unit test access to the internal access to the internal uh, functionality internal definitions uh, internal uh, declarations to uh, to be compliant with the requirement to meet the requirement that the api uh, api is abstract and api it's only uh, and API is ab abstract, so we cannot add all the public definitions to the API. Therefore, we need to to need prefix internal, but internal is not it is um, it is not accessible uh, from the unit test. Okay, it is agenda for today. Any questions? If there is no questions, proposal and. Uh, Okay, you are still answering the question, what is serialization? Let's ask next question. What's the electronic signature? It is additional thing. What is electronic signature? It is related to the streams because it is defined only for the streams. Uh, some people can, um, some people try to use um, electronic signature for other form, other form of uh, data, for example, structured data. But in any cases, it is much easier uh, to apply electronic signature only for the streams. Therefore, it is very important to know what the uh, serialization is to convert the graph of the objects into the serial of bits and applying electronic signature to the to the serial of bits. But uh, interesting, what do you know about it? It is the question out of uh, the scope of this, uh, this uh, classes, but uh, I am pretty sure that you should you should get, uh, you should know what it what it is, and uh, probably you know from other other course, courses what it means. Okay, 
there's still someone but shortly don't try to provide me a book about the signature but now let's start discussion about what the functional programming is i will wait for a while the question i'm ready for you we will try we will uh, discuss functional programming and start from the class that calls anonymous functions the anonymous function you can find in the code somewhere over here it is functional programming project folder it is also the same uh, the same project the same name functional programming an anonymous fun function provides uh, it is it's here so let's answer the question stop stop this discussion answer the next question what is the functional programming? I try to explain what it's what happens in this class in the meantime, but uh, you try to answer this question. I have another one uh, for you that uh, I hope will improve the scope where we try to find the, the answer related to the to the functional programming in this class it is as you can see it is concrete class it is a dynamic class but concrete is public class but here for example we have a method uh, it is a static method so we can call this method directly referring to this referring to this type and uh, the, my next question is if oh there is so many answers let's stop this discussion it should be you should shortly answer the question next question is uh, is state machine design pattern is a typical scenario for the functional programming it is it is something that it's typical typical solution i can say only um, I'm looking for the next question. How to investigation control in language terminology? Okay. Uh, I can provide this method as an example of functional programming, because the functional program programming actually it is it is um, pro data processing that uh, that we are that it's not that not depends on the state. After, after always calling always calling um, uh, the functionality with the same parameters we should uh, return we should obtain the same results in this in this case uh, uh, we are checking the length of the string and uh, returning the value the true or false value so is bool value depending on the if the string is is longer than than characters. So actually you can say that really this, this method doesn't depend on the, any state. Always, if we are providing here the same, the same string, we are obtaining the same result. Uh, you can find the test of this method, find all the references. I expect here it is. Oh, for example, here is an example how to make sure that providing any any string, uh, but it's longer than ten, we are returning the result. We are returning the result true. You can use it add additional character, and you can see that always it is it is true. The most important thing it is not the value and actually not functionality of this method. It is very simple. But the most important thing it is how to call, uh, how to how to call mm, a static method. The static method we are calling uh, by using the name of the method, but also uh, using the mm, using the uh, uh, the type as the prefix to this method. So we are calling in the context of the definition of the method. Next question refers to our, to our uh, laboratory, 
and it's uh, for us it is something that we discuss many times but let uh, let you add points to your scores how to implement inversion of control in language terminology how to implement inversion of control what is the inversion of control it is very important question because we are talking in many times we are talking about about container and dependency injection and things like that and in this context we are using usually dependency uh, you are using inversion of control and the question is how to implement this using so of course it, it is enough to provide just a one just a one uh, answer but re returning to the Returning to the topic uh, of uh, today, first we must answer the question, are you still reading? Because I have next, next question. Let me provide more, uh, let me provide more information about the class. This class, this class implements, uh, it's state machine. It is state machine. Uh, therefore, the, the answer, if uh, functional programming, it's, uh, best suited to implement uh, implement uh, state machine it is not it is not true it's false it is not good approach because uh, all the all the uh, uh, processing in the state machine depend on the state but the functional programming it is programming uh, approaches programming pattern where, where we are not depend where we are not depend on the state it always we are returning the same value and the, the return value actually depends only on the on the uh, output value depends on the input value so it's just a function we know the function we know the definition of, of the function and it is like this this we have the function but in the object-oriented programming <clears throat> Uh, we could have also so something that calls delegate. What is delegate? Here we can uh, we can uh, see in line 33 uh, that we have delegate. For example, here is it is word the delegate. So I I hope you can answer this question uh, uh, again using only terms of the language. But this method is very important important for testing it is not uh, related to the functional programming it's not related to the delegate but uh, i'm giving you time to answer the question but the, this method it is an example how to test how to test internal state <clears throat> how to test internal private values actually private values uh, in debugging uh, in this case, if something is uh, it's, is internal, it is it is possible to access it. But if it's private, I hope that this was this one is private. Uh, it's still it is still public, but doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, this approach is it's uh, it's the best approach where we must deal with the private state with the private values and we need to check something uh, in for this case we are creating additional methods that can check the value and as in this state <clears throat> but uh, in this case we are breaking the rule that the class should not provide any additional definition that is dedicated only for testing in this case it is dedicated only to testing. This method is used only by the testing. Find all references here. You can see that all the usage of this method is in the testing, in unit test. Therefore, we are breaking, uh, breaking the rule that it, 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 that it should be <coughs> it should be forbidden to provide any, uh, any functionality, any definition that is related to the, to the testing only. Uh, therefore, to deal with this problem, we can um, we can use a, an attribute dedicated for the environment, for for the Visual Studio and for the, de the development environment, conditional. And using this conditional attribute, uh, we can remove the code 
if the condition is not met if there is not debug if if there is no debug uh, uh, if there is no debug uh, 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 configuration so actually the code will be removed and the code means nothing i think there is someone on the code do you have any any questions or or no, I just have to. I some. I heard some then um, technical problems, and I just joined us. And I don't know why my camera and microphone is turned on. I'm trying to. Okay, so you are welcome. You are welcome. Deal with your problems, but we'll continue. I I I thought that you you have some you have some questions or comments to what I'm saying. But let me go to the next question. In the meantime, what is the Ah, next question is what is the predicate we are we'll use this word um, over and over many times so it is it's i think useful for us to know what the predicate is in terms of the language not in general what it means in english but what it means in terms of the language <clears throat> so if the condition is not met the code will be removed it actually means that calling this this method means do nothing if uh, if we if we need to remove the code from the uh, from the call chain and do nothing uh, this method could not it is impossible to return something returning something means that the method could be used as a parameter in the expression but removing from the expression is impossible because all the all the operation in the expression must have appropriate argument of appropriate value uh, therefore we must uh, here assume that the method with this uh, conditional attribute doesn't return any value but the question is how to return the value to the testing unit because in this case we are we are going to check the state and uh, check consistency of something it is very good to use the this this approach but now let's go to the answering what the delegate is here in the line 33 the delegate means type it is a type the type it is the name of the type <clears throat> and here we have a header of the method that uh, that we can refer Thanking, uh, thanks to this to this type. This type, as I said, type contains a set of values, and in this case, the value it is reference to a method. Actually, the syntax could change in many languages, but in all languages I know and I can imagine, always we are talking about the references to the methods. To call the methods, we have two approaches. There are one approach is to use the name of the method. Second, it is to use uh, something like references to, to the method. In this case, uh, each value in this set, it is not reference to one, to one, uh, to one method. Actually, it is set of a uh, set of references. So we can add we can met, add many references and using this the value of this type means calling many calling many values so and in this case we are also talking about the delegate now it is also the delegate but, but this time we call it variable delegate so here it is the type delegate and here here is the variable delegate actually it is <clears throat> it is a formal uh, argument of the method so we can uh, assign to this assign to this method reference to the to reference to the concrete methods from the concrete uh, objects uh, but uh, still we can use the name uh, delegate so answering the question what is delegate uh, we should provide to be precise, we should say that it's set that it's a type and it's variable. It's variable of delegate type of or it is just a, a type. <clears throat> and in this case, uh, this variable provides references to, to the 
references to the actual references to the actual uh, uh, method that could be called that we can call using this call instruction. It is call instruction. This way we are calling a method that have been added to this to this uh, delegate. Usually, uh, the delegate is uh, usually the delegate is uh, if it's set, it could be also empty set. If it's empty set, it doesn't make sense to call the method. Therefore, to be to be precise, here we should check if if the test result if the test result is oh, it's slowly it works is no. In this language, we could uh, uh, if it's not no. If it's null, do nothing. In case it's null, of course, we'll end up with with an exception. But but let's go to the unit test. In the unit test, uh, we are using this uh, this method here. Actually, we are creating objects of this type, anonymous function, and creating additional object. Let me pick up this definition. Of course, you can investigate after the lesson, you can investigate the code. But here in this code, the class provides two definitions. One is a method that is bool, and one is uh, one is a callback, a callback test result is just a method. It's named method, but the signature of the method is exactly the same as in the type, if the delegate type. So it must be uh, it must be compliant, and actually this way we are returning the value from this from this method, from the testing, from this uh, from this method that we have added added only for the uh, for the testing purpose. So answering the question, what is uh, what is a delegate? Uh, what is uh, how to implement inversion of control? We can say that inversion of control. We are implementing, but by calling a method that comes from different object, that comes from different class. Here it is ex exactly this example, because in the unit test we are assigning here. Uh, we are assigning. Uh, sorry, let me change it. There's too many texts on the screen. Uh, we are mm, uh, here. We are checking this this test, but uh, uh, we are providing. Uh, we are providing uh, here. We are providing reference to the method from the from the additional object callback result. Callback result. It is uh, the object reference to this object. Of course, during the runtime during the during the uh, design time we are talking about the we are talking about the variable so during the, the runtime we have reference to this object and we are uh, assigning here the method that is that it's defined in this class so actually here it is good example of inversion of control because here we are calling we are calling a method that comes from a different object that comes from the different class therefore we can call it that it's inversion of control that is inversion of control so the next problem here we have uh, it is how, how to get access because you know you can see that this method is accessible this method is accessible from uh, from this class. Let me change this arrangement of this. Consistency check is here. So we are calling something that it's not in the API. How to do it? Because it is the good, uh, it is the best approach to avoid problems that we are adding to the to the API things. They're 
we need only for the debugging? The answer you can find in the assemble info. In the assemble info is in property. Assemble info has special attribute, internals visible tool. Adding this attribute and providing the name of the of the uh, of the project. It is not the name of the project. Actually, it is the name of the DLL. It is the name of the of the assemble. Providing this because this attribute we are using at runtime and at runtime uh, the, the execution environment check if the name of the library uh, is is correct. And this internal definition will be only available for the for the predefined uh, predefined um, assembles. Okay, so let's uh, discuss next. We move to the previous and go to the next question. Okay. Let's answer to the question. In the meantime, let's answer to the question. Was what is an extension method in the context of syntax rule? Extension method in the context of the syntax rules. But I am trying to answer the question: What is what is predicate? Actually, the predicate we have over here. It is predicate. This method. It's predicate. It is the method that has one parameter and returns bool value. It is predicate. We can use something like this to check if the condition has been met. If there's, there is, there is uh, uh, the state, for example, or the data, or or, or uh, any additional uh, any additional uh, conditions we have uh, we have met. So this way we can call the method in the terms of the language. It is the method that uh, uh, the method that um, returns logical value and has one parameter and has one parameter. Okay, so let's go further for the anonymous functions. So here we can see that we have uh, named, named the function. Here it is the named function and uh, method, sorry, method. And this method we can use, we can create, here we can create delegate we can create object that refers to the concrete method usually we are using new here we should use new but let's see for the next example what happens with this new now we are talking about now we are talking about the um, uh, anonymous anonymous method so i should ask the question anonymous what is the anonymous method but i don't have questions like that because i started to ask you about the extension method and uh, mm, so let's let's discuss it on this on this example you can see that here on the right side on the left side sorry on the left side what we have on the left side on the left side we have just a method it's sorry variable it is variable but the type of this variable is delegate, pick definition. It is delegate. So we have a delegate variable. On the right side, as usual, it is expression because here we have a sign instruction. Therefore, on the right side, we have, on the right side, we have, uh, expression but this expression as usual must return just one value in this case it is delegate value expression returns delegate value and in because uh, we are dealing with dele delegate 
it means that we are returning a reference, abstract reference to a method. So what is on this after the delegate? What is here? Try to answer. Uh, uh, try to answer to yourself what is on the right side, and I can say that it is just a method. It is a method. We have here we have a list of parameters, and here we have a body. In a body we have a list of a list of instruction. Therefore, we can say that on the right side we have a method. The difference between the named method and this method is that here we don't have precise name of the method itself. And we are assigning reference to this method to the variable. It is very important uh, that uh, here we can deal in a similar way. Usually we are calling this construct as an anonymous method, but using the variable, we can call this method. Therefore, instead of the name of the method, we are using name of the variable, and actually the functionality is exactly the same. For example, here, for example, here we can uh, we can uh, use this this delegate uh, to uh, assign to, as a as a actual uh, actual value actual um, argument to the to the formal argu argument let me show you here not something wrong yes you can see that here we have delegates and to this delegate we can we can we can assign the value of, of this of this variable in this language, but it, I, I'm uh, saying that in this language, it is also possible to use this con construct like this. And so this way we can sh shortly, it is similar, similar syntax, but uh, uh, maybe easier, maybe easier to use uh, to define the delegate variable that it's assigned in this place and used by the uh, to consistently check in the object we have created we have created here okay so it is the, it is delegate if you have any if you have any questions if you have any question just um, ask me next it's uh, lambda expression you can see that here we have similar um a similar code we are creating anonymous function this class the result is assigned to false we have additional variable similar to here and we are we are calling the consistency check method from the uh, from this uh, object we have created from this this uh, variable references references that that uh, that was assigned to this variable here but you can see that the construct here is different what this what this this is also the method we have list we have list of parameters and we have a body of the method so it is exactly the same as return to the previous is exactly the same what we have done here so it is it's delegate uh, the only what uh, the uh, the only difference between the lambda uh, lambda expression and the anonymous function is the syntax semantics is exactly the same semantics is exactly the same uh, the only difference that for example here we are using uh, the type of the the type of the result here we don't have the type and now 
it is also the return value of this parameter. In this case, it is return value. But the question is, uh, what type is uh, for this variable? We can guess it from, we can guess it from uh, here. Sorry, it is not return value. It is parameter. It is exactly the same as in this case. It is parameter uh, of the of the method. We are assigning this parameter to this, to this variable. The only difference is here that we can refer in this syntax to the local variables. We can we can do it uh, we can do it uh, this way. So still, the method consist consistency check pick definition call the method check. Uh, Check the values and uh, uh, and and returns and returns and returns the value, and returns uh, the, the 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 parameter we are we are uh, returning. So actually, it is it is predicate. It works like a predicate. Okay. Here we can see the lambda expression the lambda expression test. You can analyze this this test with the random numbers, and uh, you can check how to use the random numbers tool uh, to make sure that every value works. As I said during during discussion about about the unit test, sometimes it's very sometimes it's very difficult to find errors if uh, if if you are using random access because random numbers because uh, sometimes te test works. Sometimes we are getting errors from the test, but without any additional diagnostic information, it's very difficult to to make sure what happens in the what happens in the text. But there is an additional there is additional uh, example where we are using delegates. For example, func function its pick definition. Is it a delegate? It is also the delegate. It is, the definition is provided by the system. So it's provided in system. It is standard type, but it's delegate. It returns Boolean and requires one parameter that it's integer. And here we have variable. To this variable, we are assigning reference to this method and actually this method uh, this method returns value we have return for example uh, instruction and from this return instruction we are returning value we are returning boolean boolean but uh, we are providing we are providing one, one parameter and this is delegate method so we can check, for example, that it's we can call this method. We can call this variable. This variable. Um, so the calling the variable actually means that we are calling uh, all the references to the method, all the methods that has reference assigned. It. So we can assign actually here. We can assign reference to the to the method. But it's very important here. We have lambda. And it is special type expression. But on the right side, still we have delegate. Still we have lambda expression that converts to the delegate. The problem is if it's really, if it's really delegate. For example, let's try, it is exactly the same what we have here. Let's try to copy this and put it here. We can see that now we have error, but uh, semantics is exactly the same. The only difference between between the previous previous syntax, uh, previous uh, text and text uh, we we are seeing on the screen, is that it's that we have we are using different syntax, but the meaning is exactly the same. Surely we have added. Uh, only this and this. 
how it should work. No, doesn't work. Okay. I need additional here. I need to provide the type. What is how to explain it? We can explain it that actually it is not delegate method. Expression is not a delegate. Pick definition. From the definition, we can see that it is just a class, this concrete class. It's sealed. It means that we cannot uh, derive from the class. We, can, we cannot inherit. We cannot create new types derived from this from this class, but still it is concrete type, a concrete uh, concrete class. We can uh, create uh, we can create uh, object of this class, but uh, the problem is that to create we should use this in this place. We should use a new operator, but we are not using new operator here. Why? The answer is very simple. Because in this case, we are not creating a delegate. It is not delegate. Lambda is a reference to the, to, to the expression. But in Lambda, we are saving the code that it's on the right side. We are saving the code. We are creating an, an object. Uh, that represents this this functionality, this method. It is not it is not delegate. To run, we we must compile. In these lines, you have example. You have an example how to call this functionality, this method we have on the right side. In this case, uh, the hard work is done by the compiler, by the uh, by the build operation. Therefore, we are not we are not talking about the uh, the compilation, but we are talking about the build functionality. In this case, the code is converted into the object representation and saved in this variable. Why it is so important for us? You will see example how to deal, for example, how to deal with external databases, external repositories. In the external repositories, if we have uh, to run a functionality defined in the language, we need to convert it to the expression tree. And after that, we need to convert the expression tree to the language that it's uh, that the external external repository is familiar with. For example, SQL. SQL is one of the languages that we are using to get access to the structured data that is gathered, that it's um, fetched from external from external databases, uh, relation, relational, uh, relational databases. But how to explain that previously we get we get an error. So I think this one we are getting we are getting an error error. That is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Oh, there is something I need here. Additional. It works now. Doesn't matter. Uh, usually we are not doing things like that. It is just an ex it is just an example. It is just an example. So we can, for example, copy this text here. It's a good example to say that if you don't understand precisely what the lambda ex expression is, don't use it except places where it is required. Some places requires to use lambda lambda expression and this is actually this is the same place what is difference between this syntax and previous syntax in this syntax compiler is a uh, compiler is not uh, not uh, clever enough to compile it to convert it to the object the text must be very simple 
to make the compiler uh, to enable the compiler to to convert the code into the object representation after adding after changing something in the code actually we are we are getting an error because it's not not compatible the compiler cannot cannot um replace this 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 string this text into an object representation and we'll get back to this example uh, in the next during the next lecture because the, during the next lecture we will use lambda expression uh, to provide uh, to to talk about accessing the external databases I know that some of you are interested how to get access to the external databases, how to how to how to create the representation, the cache that uh, we are using actually to to maintain the data that is in the external databases or in the external in files because the same the same approach we can use for the files. Okay, that's all for the that's all for this uh, for the lambda expression. That's all for the delegates. That's all for the unit tests and uh, explaining what what we should do to add additional functionality that is dedicated for the unit test and remove this functionality in the final uh, uh, final um, release, final production code using this conditional we cannot at using the appropriate attribute we can also get access to the internal definition let's go back to the question about the extension method extension method it's next very important construction in the language it is i think that not the construction not the syntax is very important i think that the idea is very important I hope that the same idea or similar idea will be will appear in the future languages. Uh, to, today, not only languages provide something like that because it is. It seems that it is the first time I can deal with with the language that provides syntax and semantics that allows to combine together two roles. One is a C sharp or a high level language programmer. And the SQL uh, SQL programmer. In the same time, we can be the SQL programmer and uh, and the C sharp programmer. Uh, but let's uh, deep uh, let's uh, de let discuss it in, in in details during the next lesson. Now let's go to the extension method. Answering what the extension method is, we have here extension method. Let let me show you where you can find it. It is still in the same project, functional programming, because we are talking about, still we are talking about something, functionality that don't depend on the, on the state of the object, because we are talking about the static method. Static method, and uh, especially, especially extension method, must be defined in the static classes. Static class do not have any state. Therefore, we must say that it is special, a special feature, a special construct that is dedicated for the functional programming. It is not fully true, uh, but uh, simplifying things, uh, referring to the, to, 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 the, to the abstract definition of this, uh, we can say something like this. For example, here we have a word function. It's static, and uh, it it provides some functionality uh, that uh, I can see that it returns number of words in the string as integer. So we are providing string, and uh, this method is possible to count how many. How many um, how many words we have, provided that the words words between the words we have these three characters. So, what is the extension method? It is the static method 
defined in the static class with the word this in front of the first parameter. It must have at least one parameter. Uh, okay, so let me ask next question for you. What is the extension method in the context of semantic rules? So from the static perspective, we can say that it is just static method with uh, the word this in front on the first parameter. That's all, nothing special. But now the question is, what is the difference between the static method and uh, extension method but talking about the talking about the um, semantics, so now we are talking about the meaning. Here we have an, another extension method. This one we are we are using integer as the parameter, and we are using this in front of this parameter. Here we are returning. At the value that uh, provides information, the number is even of or it's odd. Depending on on uh, on, on the number, we can return for all all true. It is next. It is next extension method. So this extension method method we can use to, in the extension method test here okay so let's ask you next question because now we are close to answer the, what the difference now we can are you still writing okay let's stop you writing now what is the difference between usage of the extension method and static method what is the difference here you can see that we are calling the word count as an static method. Here it is the uh, entry entry string containing three words, and this string we are providing as the parameter, as the actual parameter, and counting the words. And here we can uh, we can check if it's even. Of course, it's not. It's false because we have three words. So we can check additionally if, the, if we are returning the number we are returning from this method is three. But it is not very important. Uh, I have another question for you before going further. The answer is very simple, as you can see from uh, previous answers can be called extension method if it overrides instance method. Uh, because the returning to the extension method, we can see that this word, this uh, um, keyword is added as a prefix to a first parameter, but this parameter have a type. Therefore, we we call this type, uh, we call this method, this method is extension for this type. For example, this method is extension for this type. Let me recall you definition of the type. It is set of values and set of operations that we have defined on these values. Therefore, probably the string contains a set of operations we have, pick definition, as we can see, it is just a class. Still, it's sealed, but for us, it's concrete class. And there is a lot of there is a lot of. Um, let me close, make it more compact to you. As you can see, there is a lot of uh, constructors and a lot of parameters, a lot of methods that we can use for this class. All of that we can we are calling instance method because this operation is defined in the in the context of the definition of the type therefore it refers to the to the value 
of the class. So trying to imagine that, that the class, that the object contains a value, we can use this, we can use this against this value, against the state of the object. In this case, we must to define the type we are extending. It is the first thing. Sec second thing is the question if you if we really here can get access to the can can get access to the state of the object. But to ans before answering to this question, uh, it is um, explanation of the of the uh, question because it could happen that we are uh, that we are defining similar similar function similar static uh, functionality where it is here we have extension method and here for example we are defining for string we are defining additional method so the question is because the name of the method is exactly the same as in the as the method uh, as the, the the name of the method in the type in the string we have the same method we are additional parameter here let me try to find this definition pick definition because it's important and uh, contains next 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 count uh, maybe i should get the whole word here contains go to the definition oh here we are here we are definitions that is in the string type contains here we have additional parameter because uh, in this definition we are we know uh, we know um, the value we are referring to because this method is defined in context of the concrete class. Therefore, we know that we are referring to the concrete value, to the value of this class. And we are trying to find if this value is included. We can find in the, in the internal value of this, of this object, of this class, created from this class. But here we must add additional additional uh, value. Therefore, it is it is very important if it's possible to call this method if it has the same functionality, similar functionality, or different functionality. You can see here that it is not implemented. If it's not implemented, therefore, uh, it is something that uh, uh, that must return an exception. So it, after calling this method we should expect exception but uh, go back to the go back to this example usually if we are talking about the uh, extension method using the extension method you can see that we can call it like this here for example we have string and we can call it exactly the same as we are calling instance uh, instance method here we are calling this method the same method we are calling as the static method and here we are calling this method as the extension method what is the difference between these two so let me go go back to the semantics of the extension method. Actually, there is no difference. Extension method are the same meaning, the same functionality. There is no difference between the static method and the extension method. The only difference is that we can call this method as a as a stream of methods. This in this way, extension method. Uh, but there is one there is one uh, very important uh, assumption why this syntax of the call is possible 
Usually we are using the type as a prefix to the as a prefix to the mm, static method. But here there is no place where we should provide this name of the type. Uh, therefore, the type must be visible. The type must be visible in this in this class, therefore, we must to, uh, for example, use the same uh, namespace to make sure that the type, this type, is it's visible. It is it is one uh, it is assumption to use the call of the extension method because, as I said, it's only difference is a call chain. Here we can call as a chain, so. First method we are calling against the string. Even method is called against the integer because the word count returns integer, as we can see here. So even returns a boolean value. So we can check that in this case it's false because we have three words in the string. Uh, but Still, it is possible, as you can see here, it is possible to use uh, the extension method call uh, and static method call. It is exactly the same and must return exactly the same result. Therefore, the question is, what is the reason we are using, we are using extension methods? If we have the same functionality, uh, so the extension method, maybe I should it uh, explain here. So after removing, after removing this, we have static method. But adding this, sorry. After returning to the to the first des definition ending this word, we are we are talking about the extension method, but the functionality is exactly the same. The usage is exactly the same. The meaning is exactly the same. Therefore, what is the difference? The difference, of course, is only the syntax of the call. Here we can use this method as an instance method but still we can use it as we can use this as a, a, a static method let me recall me what the extension oh, let's return to your question let's stop this discussion and try to answer to try to answer last last question uh, and the last question is answered. Where it is answered? Extension method. Let's check it. The opposite contains find all references, and we can hear. Oh, there is no. There is no example in the unit test. I see. Uh, I don't know why it is removed. It should be it should be in the it should be in the unit test uh, and usually it was, but I don't know why now I can't find it. Maybe I have maybe I have uh, called I have removed it by mistake. Okay. So let's go to the next very important, uh, very important example. For example, here we are not here, peak definition. Here we have defined peak definition. Okay, let me go go back to the to the previous example because I don't uh, I don't have uh, an example in the unit test. And I cannot prove that we can we cannot call this this method 
because it overrides uh, it overrides uh, instance method. Mm, so in all always we are calling instance method. So if instance method has prior priority, if we have uh, extension method have the same name as the instance method calling calling the using the using the syntax uh, instance method call, calling uh, um, syntax we are always calling the instance method but still it's possible to call this method this extension method but only as a static method using the syntax that it's for static exactly as we have uh, we have here here word count we can call here using the instance method syntax and here using the using the a static method syntax return to example to this example where we have an interface big definition to show you what the interface it's very simple just have one method Usually during the uh, laboratory, I am asking what this method do, does. Of course, the answer is nothing because it's definition. It is only it is only declaration of the method. It's only uh, is only member of the of the uh, of the interface. But the interface is abstraction. We don't have we don't have any functionality assigned to this. It's just identifier. It is just a signature of the method because we have list of the return value and list of actual parameters but we can define also for types like this we can define uh, mm, extension uh, in this case we are calling uh, directly an instance for example here we have reference to an object that implements the interface. Let me recall our discussion about object-oriented programming. We can use abstraction as nothing, nothing unusual. Here we can create, for example, this. We can create this object. But uh, by uh, by design, I have assigning here null to make sure that it is impossible to call this method. We are getting the uh, we are getting the answer that it is null that it's null reference but it's also possible to define the extension method peak definition here you can see that we have a static method it is in static class it is the same class not this is the same class extension method so the method is static we are using this word this keyword in front of the first parameter but the first parameter it's the first parameter it's uh, this abstraction it's interface similar as we have during the lab and discuss it many times so the question is if the behavior is exactly the same if it's impossible if it's impossible to call because here still this this variable is this variable it's null so it's impossible to call instance method of this of this of this object because the reference is null so the object doesn't exist if the object doesn't exist it is impossible to call the uh, members of the object that doesn't exist here we have the same variable with the same value so it refers it refers to it refers to the to 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 null so we don't have any object the question is if uh, there's similar behavior of the instance method and the extension method from this you can guess that not actually here we are calling this method in spite that here we have no let's uh, pick definition once again you can see that if this parameter is null 
we are throwing this exception. You can check it. Uh, uh, you can check it this 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 testing method by yourself. But uh, from from this, we can prove that we are calling this method. Of course, the, the method returns exception, but still it's called. So we are not editing the method. The uh, we are using extension method. It means that we are extending some some things. Sometimes people are um, uh, by mistake things about the extension methods like the method that we are adding to the existing types. But it's not true. It's not true because it typically compiler converts the, converts this extension method into into a call to the static method. So finally in the code, finally after compilation, finally uh, after the build, we are always calling static method. And we are using the same, we are using the same functionality. Therefore, the question is why we need extension method. It's it's a work for you. It is the question for your homework. Why we need extension method? Because as we I have proved that the only difference is here that we can call, we can use this call syntax. We can use change chain of methods uh, to call the uh, to call the um, extension method instead of calling using the typical syntax that we are used for the static methods. Okay, so I think there is no time for for more. For more, we must. The time is over, almost. I think it's good, good uh, time, good point to return to the questions. If you have any any questions or things that I should uh, address, maybe next time to explain something. Sometimes it's impossible because you know it is. Uh, it makes quite a difference um, between talking about uh, about something and explaining something. It is completely different things from the didactic point. Explaining, trying to provide uh, information, how to use it, how to what is the meaning. Um, it is the most important instead of just learning uh, and talking about about examples let me switch 